orbiting high above the Earth. Astronauts are not the only living things aboard the International Space Station. Floating with them in space are thousands of tiny microbes brought to the ISS on astronauts' skin and on supplies carried aboard. These microbes colonize the space station and make it their home. Many of these microbes are completely harmless, but astronauts need to keep track of them to make sure that they're not dangerous. Just a few months ago, astronauts would do this by sending samples of those microbes back down to the ground and waiting for scientists on Earth to tell them what was living with them up in space. But now, astronauts can check up on these microbes in real time using something known as DNA sequencing. Inside every living thing, from astronauts to microbes, is DNA, genetic information composed of four letters or bases, A, T, C, and G. This DNA sequence holds the instructions for making an organism. DNA is inside each and every one of us, passed down from parent to child. It can influence the types of foods we like to eat, how we look, and even our predisposition to disease. Yet for most of human history, our DNA was a mystery to us. It's only been within the past six decades that we have had the technology to read the long strings of bases that make up our DNA. This technology is called DNA sequencing. My name's Alex Danis, I'm a geneticist, and today with the help of Genes in Space, we're gonna talk about DNA sequencing. Being able to read each letter of DNA has allowed us to make huge advances in biology down here on Earth. Sequencing allows us to study the tiny genetic changes that create diversity in plants, animals, and humans. It allows us to build evolutionary trees and to figure out how different genes function. Scientists can use sequencing to identify the species of microorganisms present in an environmental sample, or to look for evidence of an individual suspect at the scene of a crime. Up in space, Sequencing can help astronauts to identify the microorganisms living with them up on the space station. It could also help to diagnose disease on future long distance space missions. Sequencing can reveal a lot of important information about an organism and its DNA. But it wasn't until recently that we figured out how to read these fragments of DNA. In the 1960s, scientists were first able to read short pieces of DNA, but it wasn't until the 1970s that a scientist named Fred Sanger introduced what would go on to become one of the most common forms of DNA sequencing for decades to follow. Sanger sequencing creates copies of a target DNA region. As it creates each copy, it adds individual, complementary bases to the growing strand. But occasionally, it will instead incorporate specially labeled bases that stop DNA replication. This process creates many short fragments of DNA, each with a final labeled base. When these labeled fragments are run out on a gel or in a capillary tube, as we talked about in our gel electrophoresis video, they will sort out by size. By looking at the order of the fragments in the gel and decoding the identity of the final base in each fragment as A, T, C, or G, you can read the original sequence base by base. You can click the card above to learn more about the specifics of Sanger sequencing. Sanger sequencing not only gave us some of our first glimpses at genetic information, but it also allowed us to read the entire human genome. But Sanger sequencing only looks at short fragments of DNA, about a few hundred bases in length. Yet the whole human genome is 3.2 billion bases long. So scientists teamed up to tackle this challenge in a project known as the Human Genome Project which took over a decade and nearly $3 billion to complete. The final result of the project, a nearly complete version of the whole human genome, allowed scientists from around the world to get a better understanding of what genes were present in humans and what they do. It allowed us to take a closer look at our genetic information than ever before. While Sanger sequencing is a remarkably powerful tool for sequencing DNA, the Human Genome Project and the many sequencing projects that it inspired spurred innovation to create new methods of analyzing and sequencing DNA. These new methods were called Next Generation Sequencing Methods, or NGS. With these new methods, we're now able to sequence an entire human genome for under $1,000 in less than a day. That's way cheaper and a lot faster than the original Human Genome Project. Many of these NGS technologies use machines that replicate DNA, similar to Sanger sequencing. But instead of looking at one fragment of DNA at a time, they can instead look at millions. Inside these machines, a polymerase adds DNA bases one by one to each replicating strand. 
The sequencer recognizes each base addition by monitoring a chemical or fluorescent signal using special cameras. As each new base is added, the sequencer registers that base as a part of the DNA sequence. These new methods are much faster than Sanger sequencing because they can analyze many fragments of DNA at a time and have allowed sequencing to become a routine task in the biology lab. You can learn more about many of these new NGS technologies by checking out the links in the description box down below or in the card above. After NGS sequencing, you're left with lots of tiny DNA sequences that you have to assemble back into a full genome. Thankfully, computers can help us with this assembly, but it's still a difficult task requiring lots of computing power. While we've gotten better at this over time, writing faster and more efficient computer programs to help us, some regions of the genome that are repetitive and look similar to one another can still be really hard to assemble. It's like assembling a big puzzle that has areas with pictures and areas with solid colors. It can be hard to assemble the solid color areas because the pieces look similar, while assembling the picture areas with distinct patterns on each piece can be a lot easier. To tackle this problem, scientists have come up with ways of sequencing longer stretches of DNA. One new method of DNA sequencing reads the DNA bases by pulling a long DNA strand through a protein pore. As it does this, it senses how each base that's pulled through disrupts an electric current running through the pore. This is called nanopore sequencing. Sequencing DNA in these longer strands is like having much larger pieces of the puzzle we talked about before. Assembling fewer, larger pieces of a puzzle is a lot easier than assembling lots of very tiny pieces. You can find out more about this method of nanopore sequencing by clicking the link in the card up above. Because of the small size of the pores and no need for large cameras or detection equipment, nanopore sequencing has allowed DNA sequencers to become very small. While before, sequencers might be the size of refrigerators or very large microwaves, nanopore sequencers can now fit into the palm of your hand. This has allowed scientists to take sequencers outside of the lab into places like the Amazon rainforest, the ocean, and even up into space. DNA sequencing on these tiny handheld sequencers is fast becoming routine aboard the International Space Station. Astronaut Kate Rubens performed the first sequencing experiment in space using nanopore sequencing back in 2016 proving that this technology could work in microgravity. Once NASA was confident that the technology would work, they began to use it to monitor the growth of microbes aboard the ISS. In the Genes in Space 3 mission, astronaut Peggy Whitson took samples of microbes from around the ISS and used PCR to amplify a short region of DNA called the 16S region. This region is unique to each species and can act like a unique DNA barcode. Dr. Whitson loaded these amplified pieces of DNA onto the nanopore sequencer. The NASA team was then able to compare the sample sequences to a known database of microbes to identify what was aboard. This process was a lot faster than the previous method of sending the samples back down to Earth for analysis. Now these studies are expanding to tackle new goals with missions like Genes in Space 6 and the BEST mission. These missions will help to expand our current sequencing capabilities in space. Soon, upcoming technologies will enable astronauts on the ISS to look at not only DNA, but also RNA an important messenger molecule in all of our cells. This will help astronauts to look at which genes are turned on or off at any time, helping to answer questions about how our bodies respond to life in microgravity. Experiments will also compare microbes in space to microbes on the ground, to look at how quickly microbes will accumulate mutations once they arrive aboard the International Space Station. Ongoing and future missions will continue to expand our sequencing capabilities in space in order to better examine the microbes living aboard the ISS. These missions will help astronauts and scientists to better understand the organisms living with them aboard the ISS, and will help to develop tools for astronauts headed out on long-distance space missions to monitor the health of themselves and the organisms around them. But there is still so much more that could be done with DNA and RNA sequencing up in space. Future missions could use sequencing to look for changes in the expression of certain genes in astronauts, or to help look for signs of life beyond our own planet. As future space missions plan on traveling farther and farther away from our own planet, astronauts will tackle new challenges when it comes to monitoring their own health and the health of the organisms aboard their spacecraft. Sequencing could help us understand how to better grow plants in space, providing more fresh food for astronauts. It could also help us to understand how our own bodies respond to microgravity, allowing doctors and scientists to work together to keep astronauts healthy. 
One of the biggest dangers in deep space exploration is potential DNA damage, and sequencing could help to monitor astronauts' DNA to make sure that they stay safe. Sequencing could also help to diagnose astronauts who get sick far from Earth. It could also help to monitor how microorganisms change up in space in real time, allowing astronauts to find potentially dangerous mutations before anyone becomes infected or sick. Just like medicine, healthy food, and exercise, sequencing could become an important part of keeping astronauts healthy and safe as they travel to more distant parts of space. DNA sequencing is already an important tool aboard the International Space Station, but there are still so many more ideas left to explore. Future missions may even include ideas that come from you. If you enter the Genes in Space competition, you can go to genesinspace.org now to find out more about how to turn your ideas into real life experiments up in space. Now, we have some questions to test your knowledge of DNA sequencing. Take your time, answer them carefully, and we'll go over the answers after. Question one. What information does DNA sequencing give you? A the electrical charge of a DNA molecule. B, the order of the nucleotide bases in a DNA molecule. C, the number of proteins in a cell. Question two, which of these questions can be answered through DNA sequencing? A, identify a gene in the genome. B, pinpoint differences in a gene due to mutation or genetic variation. C, Identify species by analyzing conserved genetic sequences. D. Identify individuals within a species by analyzing highly variable regions of the genome. E. All of the above. Question 3. In which of these situations do you think a DNA sequencer might be required instead of using simpler tools for DNA analysis such as gel electrophoresis? A. When trying to detect the presence or absence of an infectious agent in blood. B. When trying to diagnose a genetic risk dictated by a single nucleotide change, a one base pair difference in the gene sequence. C. When trying to determine the size of a DNA fragment. Now, let's go over the answers. Question 1. The answer is B. DNA sequencing allows you to determine the order of the nucleotide bases in the DNA molecule or molecules that you are sequencing. This information can be used to understand many things about an organism such as predicting the proteins encoded by their genes. Question two. The correct answer is E. DNA sequencing can be used to answer many questions. Scientists can use certain features in the DNA sequence to identify genes within an organism's DNA. By comparing sequences between individuals, scientists can identify differences such as mutations or genetic variation within a population. By sequencing regions of DNA known to be very similar between species, highly conserved regions, scientists can identify which species the DNA belongs to. And these are just a few examples of the many questions that can be answered through DNA sequencing. Question three. The correct answer is B. Sequencing is needed when determining the DNA sequence, the order of the nucleotides in a DNA molecule. PCR followed by gel electrophoresis can be used to determine the presence of a specific DNA sequence in a sample as in answer A, or the size of a DNA molecule as an answer C.